Welcome to the Psychology Live studio. I'm Sam Gosling. And I'm Jamie Pennebaker. Today we'd like to share with you some of the features that we think are really uh, interesting and impressive about our course. One of these is that we periodically have experts from around the world come and uh, tell us about their research. So we're going to show you some of our previous experts so you can get a taste for what it's like. Check this one out. Welcome to In the Experts Chair, and today we are very lucky to have with us um, Dr. Chris Beavers, who is a, a world-renowned researcher on mood disorders uh, here at the University of Texas. And the work he does is very, very relevant to the topics we've been talking about, looking specifically at attention, also looking at individual differences. So I'm going to st start off by saying, um, Chris, why would we even care about attention? Well, I think as your lecture has nicely shown today, uh, what you attend to can fundamentally change your experience of, of an event. And so <clears throat> we're particularly interested in how depressed people attend to their world around them because they may sort of interact and, and uh, process the information around them very differently than people who aren't depressed. So, so specifically, what is it that somebody who is depressed might do differently from somebody who's not depressed? Sure. Um, in general, they tend to, and this may not be surprising, they tend to pay more attention to negative information around, uh, around them in their environment, in their internal, internal environment, so their thoughts as well. Um, and not only do they pay greater attention to this negative information, once, they're, once they latch on to this information, they then have trouble disengaging or shifting their attention away from this negative information. Okay, so and how, how do you know that? You, I mean, you're a scientist, you're doing studies of this all the time. How is it that you have gained that piece of knowledge? Sure, so we've developed a number of tests for this. Um, you mentioned the Stroop test earlier. Um, we have developed, and by we, I mean the scientific community, has developed a version of this task that uses negative words and measures how long does it take depressed individuals to go through a similar list that you, that you presented when the words are negative. And what you find is that depressed people take longer to name the colors when there are a lot of negative words than um, a non-depressed individual might. Um, there are another, a number of other tasks that we use as well. We you do eye tracking um, studies where we me directly measure line of gaze. Um, so we might present a, a picture that has different emotional features mm -hmm. and, and measure how long do they spend looking at these different um, emotional aspects of so the So what would picture. be some examples of emotional features you might have in one of these pictures in your studies? Yeah. Um, so we might um, present a, a crowd scene. So a number of people standing around. Um, and they may be expressing different emotional um, expressions. And some may be negative, some may be happy, some may be neutral. Um, and what we measure is how much time do different individuals spend, um, how much time do they spend looking at the negative faces versus the positive faces versus the neutral faces. That would be a straightforward example. So, so in, in this study, are they, do you have both, both effects such that they are quicker to go to those faces and more reluctant in some ways to, to leave those stimuli. Do you have both of those or just one or the other? Yeah, it, it tends to be both. Um, it tends to be that they find these faces a little bit faster, and then once they lock onto these faces, they have trouble um, shifting their attention away. Um, we'll sometimes um, develop a, a test that, that tests that specifically, where we'll have them look at a negative face and then cue their attention to another part of the screen and measure how long does it take to shift their attention away. And we find that depressed individuals have um, a particular difficulty with that. And what, why, what's going, why are they doing that? Why do we think they're so drawn to this sort of information? Um, well, we, we think that the, there are a couple things that may be going on. Um, we've done a number of studies where we've looked at um, genetic factors. Um, and we've reliably identified some uh, genetic factors that seem to predict um, this tendency to look at negative information. Um, we've also looked at, we've done some brain scans and we've looked at how um, these individuals process these in, this information. And you mentioned um, um, frontal uh, cortex function. Um, we found that depressed individuals tend to have sort of diminished activity in the regions, the frontal regions that they need to shift their attention away. So I guess the big question is, can you do anything about it? These, seem thi these things seem very basic in, in the body and the mind. What, what, what can we do, what can they do to change this? Yeah, so that's uh, one of the big questions that we're trying to tackle right now. Um, there are a couple of things that may be helpful. Um, 
one goal is to help depressed individuals improve their frontal function so it's easier for them to shift their attention away from this negative information. Um, one approach that we've taken, it's a pretty straightforward approach, surprisingly straightforward. Um, we've had them do a series of somewhat complex math problems. Um, we have them do this repeatedly, so they, they're practicing um, various math problems. Um, and then at the end of this uh, practice period, we, uh, we test them again on their ability to shift their attention away from negative stimuli. And what we find is that they're actually getting better um, as a result of this training. And so there may be some cognitive strategies or cognitive training that we can provide depressed individuals that may help to improve some of their um, frontal lobe function that may help them then shift away from negative um, information. And is that something you'd recommend that people could do in their daily lives? I mean, I know you don't have the f full findings of trying this out in, mm -hmm. in daily life, but is this something that might be helpful? Um, it, it's something, it, it can't hurt. I mean, I think one of the questions that we're um, following up on right now is what happens with repeated training over many, many days. So, so far, a lot of our effects um, are limited to um, in that same day, within that same hour, we see some improvements. But does the, the question is, do these improvements stick? And we don't know yet. And so do these people who so it suggest there's something going on in the frontal cortex, do they, the people who are prone to depression and seeing these things, do they also have other effects that you'd expect from frontal lobe function, like being, are they more impulsive and those sorts of things too? Um, there is, there does seem to be a subset um, that are more, more impulsive. And what we find is that, um, Things like impulsivity, even negative thinking, gets worse as the cognitive demands increase. So if somebody, if you have them do two things at once, they may become even more impulsive. They may be more likely to have uh, negative thoughts. And uh, finally, um, do you see these sorts of um, tendencies to attend to some things versus others in other types of people. So for example, people who are anxious, would they, would they have a similar sort of tendency? Yeah, in anxiety, it's slightly different. Um, anxious individuals tend to show more, greater, tend to direct their attention towards threatening um, information. Um, they're more concerned about threats in the environment as opposed to negative or, or sad information. Wow, that's really fascinating work that uh, Chris is doing. And the good news is he's here at the University of Texas, and you can take a class. He teaches abnormal psychology. So in the years to come, you may, if you're lucky, be taking a class from Chris. Chris, thank you very much. <laughs>